TikTokers, welcome back. This week's episode is a good one. We have lots of fun things planned. But first, we have local DJ Don Kong coming on the show. Some of you may know him around campus, but today we're going to get to know a little bit more about his music. So let's give a warm welcome to DJ Don Kong. Yeah. Yay. Thank you so much for coming on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you for having me. Good to be here. Wow, so, you know, I think a lot of people around campus know you for your, you know, your DJing mm -hmm. and, you know, you've DJed formals and parties and yep. stuff like that. But, you know, we want to get to know a little bit more about, like, you as a musician. So can you, like, tell us a little bit more about, like, how you got into music and everything and around that? Yeah, sure. Um, so music's always been a part of my life. Um, and I grew up, uh, my mother introduced me to classical music when I was younger. Um, and then I always tell this story, but growing up, my dad had this big cabinet full of CDs, um, all from the eighties, uh, all from the eighties. Wow. And, and when, when he threw, you know, through his college years and stuff like that and some early 2000s yeah. stuff. So I grew up listening to a lot of different genres and, and different styles from different decades and stuff. So I've always loved music, yeah. you know, as, as with a lot of people. So. Is there like a certain genre that like got you inspired to start getting your <laughs> yeah. career in music? So um, there were a lot of like I was big into yeah. grunge, uh, like I was big into like Blink 182, mm -hmm. and they're oh, they're yeah. finally on the comeback, which I'm really happy That's about. True. They sort of reunited, um, but I was always big on Blink 182, and growing up. Uh, I wanted to be a drummer in yeah. a in a band like that. So. And it makes sense because so many, you know, now you're creating beats and like you're doing all that. Yeah. So it's definitely like that big correlation from yeah. Blink 182 to, you know. Yeah, it's it's big difference. Um, and just it, it just shows like the different, you know, mm -hmm. gro the growth pretty much I've had since yeah. when I started playing instrument to, to the now where, you know, before I needed a band, exactly. now I can produce it all myself, so. Yeah, so like what type of equipment do you use when you produce music? Like, do you do it in like the Elon Music Studio or do you have your own equipment? Like, yeah. how does that process look like? I'm, I know nothing about music, so <laughs> like, I genuinely am like curious how you mix your music. Yeah, so uh, the, the the equipment here at Elon was actually one of the big reasons why I decided to come to Elon. Yeah. Um, it just, you know, that showed that they cared about the music department and things like that, and it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. um, any other school I visited so um, I yes I have my own stuff uh, and pretty much at the bare bones what you need is a laptop really that's really? it um, laptop and some sort of musical ability yeah. uh, and obviously you can expand it from there so you know I have my own setup in my house mm -hmm. and things like that where I do a lot of my stuff but when I need to, to mix and stuff, I'll head over to the music studios yeah. and Did you, is there like a software that like you would recommend? Like how, like when you say you do it all on your laptop, yeah. like how does like, is it through, you know, it, what type of software like is involved with that? So it's called a DAW, uh -huh. D-A-W, uh, which is a digital audio workstation. Um, <laughs> and a lot of people know GarageBand. That, yes. Right? And See, that's that, the only one I'm familiar yeah, with. Yeah, and that know? is one, everyone's Fruity Loops, all yeah. things like that. Um, that's what everyone's familiar with. But I use a software called Ableton Live. Okay. Um, which is like a, it's it's specific for music, you know, production and performance as mm -hmm. well, which I love about it. Kind of more about your music. Like, mm -hmm. what is the first track you produced? And like, how did you get to where, like, cause, I mean, your SoundCloud, yeah. you know, and, you know, drop the SoundCloud name, you know, have a pretty, like, impressive SoundCloud, lots of tracks. Like, what, how would you say like your music style has like evolved from like when you first started? To, great like, question. Now? Great question. Um, I mean, I could go on forever about yeah. that, but I'll keep it <laughs> short. Um, yeah, it's evolved. And the way I see it evolve the most yeah. is experiences I've had in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, obviously everything evolves, you know, just look exactly. at anything. Everything evolves and, and that all is because of a reason. Um, whatever it is, but I get inspired by the people around me, and the more and more people I meet, the more and more I see that style changing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I've just, it's really evolved from me wanting to create club tracks yeah. and, cl and songs that people can get drunk to with a club and, you know, dance yeah, with the strobe exactly. lights, to wanting to be looked at as a musician mm -hmm. and looked at as someone um, who can bring emotion through a track and make people feel something yeah. other than just, um, like just that crazy <laughs> club like party yeah, vibe. Yeah, you know, I but still like, love that. Yeah. I still want to make stuff like that, but I just, I, I've, I've, you know, the more and more I grow, the mm -hmm. more and more I want to be looked yeah. at, like I said, um, as a musician and as an artist who's got passion behind his stuff. Yeah, like do you think your like vibe has changed with your music, like since you got to Elon? Like do you think that you like want it, like you've tried like catering to like Elon's audience for so long and like now you're trying to expand like that kind of correlation? Because yeah, it's like when the, you're in a certain environment, like you always try to like, make something that people will enjoy, like mm -hmm. people, when people come together. Exactly, you know? it's a great question. Um, yeah, and my freshman year, Fisher. 
Fisher yeah. got big, right? And losing it and all that stuff. And so that genre, which is tech house, really, to be completely honest with you, yeah. it's not that hard to make. It's not that hard. <laughs> I mean, granted, some people do it way better than others, like Fisher, yeah. for example, but it's really not that hard to make. Um, and you very need you need very minimal music ability to make that. Um, so when I first came to Elon, I'm like, mm. I'm making this stuff, yeah. man. You know, I, step, yeah, this, trap house, yeah, all ex the time. exactly, all that stuff. The stuff people just you know want to mm. put on and just like go out to, exactly. right? Um, and now, so uh, now I look at myself as a senior here mm -hmm. at Elon, um, and I still have that energy, you know, because I want to be able to present myself through music, yeah, right? and, exactly. and who I am and things like that. So that's still there. That energy, that danceability, that funness, mm -hmm. the lightness, and you know, the the summertime vibe that exactly. I always try to, uh, you know, promote in my music. It's all there. Um, but how you get there is a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. And with my latest release, you really get to see um, a lot more of me in there. Yeah, you know? like more, like more of your personality, exactly. your style, like exactly. your brand. Exactly, like, you know. and it starts out, you know, just orchestral. Mm -hmm. Like you don't hear that very often exactly. in a club or at a party, right? So, no, it's more so now what I want to make. Yeah, and right? add and some depth to it. Exactly. Like adding, like I, you know, I've heard some tracks where like with flutes and like violins mm -hmm. and other stuff, and it's like you, you don't expect it, but it like adds so much more depth and like an acute amount of knowledge to yeah. know that like what will fit with like techno and orchestra. So like props to you for like knowing how to like balance that <laughs> in like in your latest track and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. But like speaking of the summer, you know, you were in LA this yeah, summer. Yeah, so like yeah, tell yeah. us about like kind of some of your experiences, <laughs> sure. like DJing at clubs yeah. and like how you got there and like, it, did you think that like, do you think that influenced like your senior year and like making your brand as an artist? Yeah. So obviously we got to share yes. that wonderful experience yeah, together. Yeah, which I'm very, yeah, very fortunate for yeah. that. Uh, yeah, this summer, uh, I, I'm gonna always remember the, that mm -hmm. moment in my life um, for a lot of reasons, but one of the biggest being, I saw myself grow more than I've ever had before. Yes. Um, and that's simply for the reason because it was a new experience for me. And I, got, I went to a place where I saw everyone and their mother trying to do what I'm doing. Exactly. Right? And I realized how competitive it was and, and how you really just need to be yourself. You need to be you. And mm -hmm. if you're not, people aren't gonna wanna invest in you. People aren't gonna wanna listen yeah. to you. Um, so yeah, I saw so much growth through the people I met, the experiences I had. Yeah. Um, and it really, you know, I, I've been saying this to a lot, of a lot of people recently. LA was so amazing for so many things. Yeah. So many things. But the hardest thing I, I'm dealing with right now is, I really saw what my future could look like. Mm -hmm. yeah. I could move to a city yeah. and I could do what I love. I could take right? so many different directions. Yep. I could do what yeah. I love. And then I had to come back here and study yeah. for tests, <laughs> do homework, you know, do all that stuff that I just don't really want to be doing yeah. anymore. You know, but um, it was just like, I got a taste of that and mm -hmm. it's now driving me to go, okay, exactly. I got to get back there. And like, it's like all the steps you're taking to yep. kind of proceed like with your career and stuff like yeah. that. And like, do you have any like, projects in the plan like that are kind of coming up and like what tell us about like your latest releases sure. like where we can find your music and sure. everything like that. Yeah so uh some exciting new stuff um that I got coming out um so number one I just released my fly on the wall remix which Ben owner is a guy we both know yeah. uh oh, yeah. he created this wonderful track called fly on the wall and he gave me the opportunity to remix it and That's that awesome. is this is the first song where I get to show this new style I've been mm -hmm. talking about and just, this is the first song where I just go, this is me. This yeah. is me, and this is my artistry, and this is the Don Con sound. Yeah, this is the Don Con sound. So, yeah, it was, it's, it's, I'm, I couldn't wait for it to be released, and I'm so happy it's out because people really love the style. And it's always nerve wracking doing something new, doing something yeah. people really haven't heard. You so, know, getting feedback. Can exactly, be hard. exactly. Can be hard. So, uh, I had that, um, and then I got some wonderful, I got another, I got hired to do another remix. Um, so I got that coming out. That's around December. Working on that, and I'm very excited with that. Yeah. Uh, it's an indie band out of uh, Wyoming, mm -hmm. and uh, so they're they're loving that so far. And then lastly, uh, some big news, and this is the first time anyone's actually hearing this. I'm ready. Uh, I got uh, I got approved, not approved, but. I'm opening for Loud Luxury uh, in nice. Cancun, Mexico oh, in March. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's I'm opening huge. for them, uh, an artist called Don Bresky that's and cool. an artist called Surf Mesa wow. in Cancun, Mexico in that's March. That's so, so impressive. You know, <laughs> getting yourself out there, yeah. especially just like getting out of the Elon bubble, mm -hmm. really showing yeah. and showing the tracks who you are. Like yeah. that is so impressive. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, we get to hear it first live, you know, with the 
that where you're playing and stuff like that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know? No, it's cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy I was able to. Felt good to say that. I've been kind yeah. of keeping it in because I'm like, I know it's it's a long ways away, exactly. right? I don't you wanna, don't want to jinx it. You yeah, jinx and, it. and I just, you know, like yeah. uh, well, a couple really days ago, they're like, all right, man, you're locked in. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm, I'm ecstatic about that because those are opportunities mm -hmm. that not everyone gets, and those are opportunities you need to take advantage of and, and give your all to. Yeah. So. Well, congratulations thank with you. everything you've been up thank to, you. and like, th thank you for coming on the show. Of course, and thanks us for like having me. I always to. loved it. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning into this interview with Dong Kong. Next up, we'll be trying some fall drinks. Don't go anywhere. Hey, talkers, and welcome back. Today, we are going to be looking at some fall drinks from Starbucks, and we are all so excited. So excited. My name is Kelsey. I'm Holland. I'm Paige. So we are so excited. So we're gonna get in, into it. Which one do we want to try first? Yeah. Should we make it down yeah. the Let's down the row? Let's go down the row. <laughs> All right. So our first one we have is the Grande Peppermint Ooh. Mocha. I believe. Have yeah. you guys ever tried this one before? Yes. I have not tried this one. I, I well, I've tried it iced actually. Oh, oh so you have. Um, okay. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. I love, I'm not a huge mocha person, but I am a cute, big peppermint person. I'm the exact so. opposite. Ooh, so okay. So we're gonna see. Let's it see. smells really nice. Oh, let's, well, wait, we'll wait. <laughs> right. Right. I'm really excited. All, all <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. So excited right. for I'm sorry. ready, I'm okay, ready. Ready, <laughs> one, two, three. Oh, I like. Uh, I it like gives like hot one. chocolate. This yeah. is so yes, good. It's, it's hot, hot chocolate. chocolate. It's not mm -hmm. even like super minty, and I actually like really don't like minty. But it just gives like an aftertaste like of mintiness, mm. so like it makes your breath not like smell it. <laughs> True. It's not too sweet. True. Yeah. And I really, because I feel like Starbucks sometimes like overdoes it with like their flavors mm -hmm. and sweeteners. It's like perfect. Honestly. This is like yeah. subtle. It's not gonna give me a stomach Let's ache. Give it like a. I'd honestly say like a eight and a half. I know. I was gonna go eight for eight. sure. I go eight. Yeah. Eight, like nine. eight and a half. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Okay, our next one is the ice sugar cookie almond latte. Okay, Ooh. I'm excited because I like stuff without dairy in it, mm -hmm. so I have high hopes. Yeah, okay. this is like a big, I see a lot of TikToks of this one. People love this, mm. so I'm so I'm excited to try so it. I'm very much so dairy lover. I love my milk, but mm. um, okay. I like sugar cookies too, so. We'll see. Smells very pungent. <laughs> yeah, very, mm. very, very strong. Sugar. Yeah. Okay, you guys ready? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm ready. All right. Oh, it's very light. Mm. It kind of tastes like a creamer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a holiday yeah. creamer. It's like a holiday. I don't know how we feel about that. No, it's, it's just not as um, sweet as I was expecting. It might be also because the ice has gotten to, gotten to mm. it a little bit. Yeah. But, it, but it's very light. I, it was definitely not going to mess up your stomach. No, I kind of like dairy. that it's not as sweet. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it definitely like it, tastes like a sugar cookie for sure. It tastes like a sugar cookie, but it's giving me like something that I would pour into my coffee, Another not coffee, like the drink yeah. itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I honestly, mm, I it's like a little the peppermint too light for me more. personally. Mm -hmm. I would say maybe like a five out of ten, only because I like mm -hmm. sweet things. Mm -hmm. But I give it a six. Yeah, I was gonna go six. six seven. I maybe would order it again, but like maybe with some modifications. Got it. Okay, okay, I feel that's that. very fair. Very fair, very fair. Okay. That's my new word these days. <laughs> very fair. <laughs> Can't be judgmental these days. This one looks mm -mm. fancy. Now, bear with me if I spill this. <laughs> what is it's this okay. one? Whoa. All right. Okay, you did good. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's hope that I have. That one, I'm sorry. I, I do not think I will be as graceful. <laughs> I'll let you read it out for us because I forgot to read the. Yeah, which one okay. is this? Okay, it is the caramel brulee latte. Ooh. Interesting. Okay. There's definitely like caramel drizzle on the top there. I love a caramel okay, drizzle. Are you ready, guys? Yeah. Um. It's tasting very similar to sugar cookie. It is. It's it it just tastes like whole milk to me. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I don't know. It tastes it like tastes it. Oh yeah, it I do does. Taste a yeah, dairy -ish. pretty milky. Yeah. I think it might just be like the whipped cream. Though. You know what? You're so right. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the whipped cream. I mean, it's good. It is low key good. I actually, after I get, a I few actually more sips, like it. I didn't think I, I was gonna this. like that. I enjoyed this one. I like it. I like. I think the caramel gives it a little bit more mm -hmm. sweetness. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. I'm definitely not gonna finish that one though. I would mm. give it a seven. It's better than the other one, but it's not my favorite. I agree. Seven out of yeah. ten for I'm me as well. I'm gonna go seven too. Yeah. All right. yeah. I'll let you guys finish. I'll finish it. While I, uh, mm. Read the last one. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not the last one. Sorry. They look the same. 
All they right. do. Last but not least is the, red the Grande Chest Chestnut Chest Praline. praline. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. I've never tried this one before. Me neither. I don't think I've ever tried like a chestnut, like a chestnut Me coffee. Because I don't, hazelnut is a big Me coffee too. flavor and I chestnut. That's haven't very tried that. holiday ish. Okay. Very. We'll see. Very much so. Fancy. And I'm mm. usually like Even a warm drink. Like it, I probably okay. won't tell the truth because <laughs> it, <laughs> it just, just sounds just sounds like I need to like it, you know? True. Okay. All right, ready? Okay, ready. Yes. Mm. No. That's very strong. It's strong. It's like it's like if you it's like very coffee. If you, like you coffee, love coffee, this, this is, is your you're drink. Gonna like it. This is for but you. This is personally mm -mm. not my mm -mm. drink. This is no. giving very much so. Three out of ten. Yeah, I'm, yeah. that's definitely very my good. least favorite. But mm. I mean, well, I think that all of our favorites mm -hmm. were most likely the peppermint mocha. Yeah. Peppermint yeah. mocha. Peppermint mocha for um, sure. This was, was a delicious. caramel brulee was a, a close second. Yeah. It was, underdog. It was there. very good. Yeah. But all right, so now stay tuned and stick with us while we go to Holland's Corner. Hi, and welcome to Holland's Corner. I'm Holland, and today I'm going to be talking to you about outfits for inconsistent weather. So first, I'll be talking about layers. Layers are really important when the weather is being kind of crazy. I know right now in Elon, North Carolina, um, it was just like 80 degrees the other day and now it's going down into the 50s and it's really hard to dress in that kind of weather. So me personally, I've been incorporating layers into my wardrobe. So on the left, you could see that there's um, a, like a light sweater on top with some jeans, some like comfortable shoes. In the middle, we have a lot of layers with kind of a um, heavier coat a sweatshirt and then a shirt underneath. And then here we have um, just a zip up um, quarter zip. I think all these are really good options for weather like this, just because you can take things off if you're getting overheated and you can put it back on if it ends up getting colder throughout the day. Next, I'll be talking about skirts. I love skirts in the fall and autumn season. I think it really elevates an outfit and it can also make it easier to dress if the weather gets warm throughout the day or cold. Um, longer skirts are really nice. I feel like it makes the outfit look very autumnal, um, but also, also um, short skirts with tights are a really nice look as well. Um, I love the plaid and then anything with patterns on it is nice as well. Big bags are another staple that I love in the fall. I feel like if you have a lot of layers on, just like stuffing them in your bag sometimes, it's a really easy way to um, work with the weather like that. Um, here we have a really nice bag. I think like waffle texture is something that I've been seeing a lot recently and something like this, like the crochet. So textures in the fall when it comes to bags are something of a trend that I've been seeing lately that you could incorporate into your wardrobe. Airy sweaters is an another staple that I love to use in the fall when the weather is getting hectic. Um, it's just really easy to take a cardigan or a sweater off, put it back on. And something that has um, a lighter texture also doesn't make it too stuffy if you're sitting in class, at work, etc. I also love dresses with warm accessories. Anything with long sleeves is really nice, like a maxi dress with long sleeves. I feel like that's a really cool um, way to accessorize. Um, same with dress that's short sleeve, but then have like a scarf around your neck. If you're feeling cold, you can bundle up with it. And then again, using cardigans with like a slip dress is another alternative that I think would look really nice, keep you warm, but also keep you cool if you need to do that with the weather. And then lightweight pants. Um, this is like one of my must-haves in the fall. I don't like wearing jeans when the weather gets super hectic. It just doesn't make me feel comfortable when I'm sitting in class. So I'll opt for something like the airy waffle pants. It's very soft texture, very soft, comfortable, something like this. Uh, also airy, it's a flare pant with corduroy texture on the outside, but a nice uh, polyester on the inside so you won't overheat. And then something like this, a cargo pant. I think it's really fun to pair a cargo pant and a sweater together. I feel like it's a really fun way to elevate your style and it's really good for pictures as well. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Wake up cool coffee, dangerously alarming. 
Hi eTalkers, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about all the celebrity gossip that's happened in the past two weeks. So we're going to start with Selena Gomez and her My Mind and Me documentary. So mm -hmm. what do you guys think? Did you watch it? I, I did watch it. I did watch it. Um, my first thoughts were that I, I wasn't used to seeing her so young because I'm used to her mm -hmm. now what she's in her 30s now. Yeah, I'm used to her. more mature Selena Gomez. So when I saw her back, it really just reminded me of her like, I don't know, her Disney Channel self a bit, even though her she childhood. was a bit even though she was a bit older in the documentary from the start. I was like, wow, I haven't seen her that young in so long. So it made me really nostalgic towards like Disney Channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was over like a Six or so years, he right? Was over, yes, yes. So, like, she didn't really even. I thought that um, she would be talking more about like Justin Bieber and all that stuff, just because that mm. was such a big thing in the tabloids. But she really focused more on herself, and she talked about um, dealing with uh, bipolar disorder and um, just like her struggles with her career and her job mm. and her mental health. Yeah. It was really powerful to watch. Like, I love seeing like an insight into her life in that way. I. I I really was um, interested in the paparazzi part where they mm -hmm. were like, they went more behind the scenes on that. I feel like you don't see that a lot with like how celebrities actually really feel about like being hounded by the paparazzi. Yeah. Um, so I like that she covered just everything. Nothing was off limits. Um, and I think with yeah. six years of filming, you just have a lot of content. Cause I know people were talking about stuff that was cut out mm -hmm. and other things. And I know a big thing was she was saying how Taylor Swift's one of her only friends in the industry. Yeah. And her kidney donor, Francia, who was her friend, is now upset that she said that. I heard there was like an unfollow in the midst. Yeah, there like, was, I think <laughs> so. like her. And Selena actually commented back and said, sorry, I didn't name anybody. They didn't I name knew. everybody mm -hmm. she knew. So, yeah, yeah. Which I, I feel like that was big for her because usually she like doesn't speak up. And after that, I've I was kind of happy. I was like, go Selena. Well, like, like, speaking of her and her friendships, like in the documentary, like she had a friend like Raquel and that, and they had some like arguments in the documentary that they included, which I thought was really interesting because sometimes celebrities like don't include yeah. like their arguments with their friends Especially, in the documentaries yeah. about themselves. So it was very like real when she showed those moments of kind of the tension mm -hmm. between her and her friendships. Because she Raquel's on her cooking show too. That oh, I, I didn't know that. Okay. So and usually they're okay on that. So I think it's interesting, and they've been friends for ten years. Yeah, Raquel okay. is in, like very famous, which is also an interesting dynamic to have someone so famous and then just she like, is yeah. in pop culture though because mm -hmm. somehow she's connected to Haley Bieber. Oh, yeah, so she's friends. friends with her. Yeah. Yes. Which I think was interesting. She's the one who got Haley and Selena yeah. to take the picture together. Yeah. I see. That's so, interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. And then Raquel also went to the trip uh, to Africa with Selena, and that was like mm. a major part of the documentary as well. She um, raised a lot of money and donations for a certain organization there that helps women go to college in Africa. And so she really, really enjoyed her time in Africa. And a big part of the documentary was that she didn't want to go back home because she just loved the break so much of not having to be around the paparazzi mm -hmm. and not having to do the promotions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I that love that she really included good. more of like philanthropic things. She just everything that she included was just so powerful. And she even included yeah. like after um, her career mm -hmm. starts dying down that she wants to like devote her life yeah. to philanthropy. And yeah. I didn't know that about her. And I think that's such like a wonderful message that she put out there that she wants to continue with the philanthropy that she's already been doing. I think so yeah. too. Yeah, and I think with her friends, it gets on the topic of Taylor Swift, which we talked yes, about Taylor. two weeks ago, and her album did hit number one. I'm so happy so, for her. Thank God. Oh my yes. gosh. The whole top 10 was also all her, mm -hmm. and then so Lana amazing. Del Rey was yep. in there with her yes. song. Yes. So it was the first time it was all women on so the top amazing. 10. Yeah, and yeah. I will say that the album has grown on me quite a bit since the last time we talked about it. I was wondering. <laughs> it has grown on me a lot, and I'm just so happy for her. I feel like she just deserves this. I mean, it's not the first time she's been in the top 10, but like just to have like all, all the, the songs, 10. like that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, it's so incredible. Who? Her tour obviously is coming up. Yes. Did we all register for tickets? I, I registered I know on I three counts. She's not going anywhere near I live. Uh, <laughs> me either. Oh, you're still going. I'm going to visit family in New Jersey. Oh my gosh, uh, I'm jealous. And yes. You're gonna have to. If I get tour. tickets, I'm, I 
we're pre- we're praying that I get selected. And I love I that she made them like affordable. Like I saw mm-hmm. some of them were like what fifty dollars. Like yeah. that's so affordable for and like an artist. I'd be fine in the nosebleeds. Just saying. <laughs> like I'm. <Yeah. laughs> I'm trying to get two tickets. Okay. Oh, okay. Two tickets for yeah. my friend and I. Shout out to her. Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try and get them and. We'll see how it goes. There's three different shows for New Jersey. Yeah, there's so three Boston shows. Hopefully, you I'll guys be are going those. to have so much fun. I'm, I'm gonna be thinking good thoughts for yes. that you get them. Thank, okay, okay, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Yes. yes. Also, Ryan Reynolds was talking about Taylor too. Oh uh, well, he's married to Blake Lively, and Blake Lively and Taylor are very mm-hmm. good. Her mm-hmm. best friends. So. He was just saying how they have midnight dance parties. Oh. And how the girls okay. finally realized that Taylor's famous oh, because yes. they no thought way. she was just an aunt. That That's liked to bring so her guitar. Funny. That must I be so, so cute. interesting. Like imagine like you grow up with someone, you think of them as like an mm-hmm. like an aunt family figure, yeah. and then you realize one day like this person's really famous. Yeah. <laughs> well, so are their parents. I don't even That's know if true. they know that. I know. But I wonder what do you think the new baby's gonna be named? No idea. Some yeah, people think no that guesses. she already threw it in a song, but I feel like it's too early still. <gasps> I have no people idea. People are thinking it's Daisy because of like Daisy May. I uh, or I just like can't maybe, buy that yet. Uh, maybe Lavender. <laughs> Lavender <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, I have no idea. Well, because I was surprised that their third kid was Betty. Because mm-hmm. I feel like James and Inez were so unique. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it was like Betty was such a girly name. Because I know they went with James because Blake, mm-hmm. as the mom, was kind of more a guy-oriented name that they wanted to switch back. Yeah, right. So we'll see. I think, well, we don't even know if they're having a girl. I feel like it's going to be a girl. I feel like they're going to yeah. have four girls. No I don't know. I guess they're going to see. I just I want them to have a healthy baby. Yes. And I'll be happy with I whatever. Know. I yeah. wonder if they'll like announce when they, um, their baby's born. Yeah, because she kind of announced later. It, yeah. Because, mm-hmm. again, that was back to the paparazzi. Yeah. They always hound her and her kids, mm-hmm. which I True. feel really bad about. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. Very interesting. Ryan Reynolds <laughs> said he also wants Taylor in a Deadpool movie. <gasps> Okay. She always wears that would suit. be so funny. Yeah. I feel like Taylor's <laughs> sense of humor is like I don't know, like it's just very like witty at times, mm. and I feel like her and Deadpool would be like really interesting to see how they like interact if she happens to be yes. in one of the movies. That so, would be funny. Yeah, that'd be really funny to see. Well, speaking of superhero movies, the sexiest man alive is Chris Captain America. Evans. <laughs> Chris Evans. Chris Evans. Oh. How do you guys feel about that? I love him. Thank God. <laughs> Literally, it was, about so time. deserved. So yes. deserved. I can't believe he's never won before. Well, it's two Marvel guys back to back. Oh wait, won what? Last year. Paul Rudd last year. Yes. Oh. Okay. And then was I think the year before was Idris Elba or was it Michael B. Jordan? It was Michael B. Jordan. So okay. then it's three Marvel guys because oh, he was in Black Panther. Yes. Oh my so god. So it's the three of them. Look at them go. I know. I yes. I love Chris Evans. I, do I feel too. like he's so deserving. I think he it's funny so though deserving. because I feel like Paul Rudd's the age where he kind of like took it. He was like, okay, I'm in my 50s. I'll be sexy for But Chris Evans is so uncomfortable with it. Well, I it's, feel like he's a bit of a shy person. Like, even yeah. if you look at his Instagram, it's like a lot of his, his dogs. dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody <laughs> edited his dog on Dodger, Cutest Puppy Alive. I saw, and he was I like, oh, I love this. I thought it was real actually till right now. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> really? I think it was a fan. That was so looked, funny. But yeah. it, was, it was funny. And all my friends are super excited. And yeah. I think it's a better choice than Blake Shelton. I will say yeah. that every was year. he the one that was? Oh, no. 2017. He still uh. hasn't given it up, though. <laughs> no. He talks about it all the time. Yeah, I think I think this was needed. I think this is what the public wanted. I think yes. it's what mm-hmm. Chris Evans deserves. He he did, and the pictures were amazing. I loved them all. Mm-hmm. I may be buying people just to have the spread. So we'll see. Yes. Well, to also see the other honorable mentions in there. Oh. I didn't look at those yet. I, I know Jack Harlow's in one. December oh, 7th. Okay. okay. We'll see. We'll see. We will definitely see. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for Fashion Corner up next. Hey everyone, it's Kelsey back here and welcome back to Fashion Corner. So today we're going to be talking about some ways to kind of upgrade your fall day aesthetic because I feel like we all get stuck in like these jeans and basic legging wear. So we're going to just spice it up a little bit. So let me show you a few tips of how I kind of like to dress up my outfits in the fall. So the first one is trench coats. The trench coats just allow your outfit to just look so much more classier, classier, excuse me. Um, and it just kind of dresses, dresses it up a little bit more without having to do a lot. Literally, you can wear the exact same outfit and throw on a trench coat and not only be warmer, but like just look so much classier. And it's definitely just giving more evening type deal. So these are like for evening dates, I would suggest. And even throwing on a couple of boots would also make that a lot better. 
So this one is an oversized button up shirt kind of look. So I threw two um, ideas to put that out there. So one, you can just do like an oversized and just put like a little tuck. As you can see, I'm also wearing an oversized one. This is definitely not something I'd wear with date because I'm wearing leggings. But as you can see, it's a lot more dressier than how I would wear it if it was just a sweatshirt and leggings, right? So just throwing on a little bit more pop of color or just like a little addition to your outfit completely changes the look. As you can see, if she didn't have this little white oversized button up, then it would just be kind of like a plain black crop top. And the, the shirt definitely just adds a little extra touch and makes it more date-like. So our next one is, ladies, the leather pants. You know, we all love them ever since 2021. So, or TikTok, rather. So leather pants are definitely a great thing to do in the fall and winter. Um, one, they keep you warm, and two, they just up your outfit, regardless if you're wearing a sweatshirt or even just a black um, bodysuit or even just a black shirt, long sleeve shirt. Um, so I feel like you can definitely wear these either with sneakers or with boots. Um, and just adding like a couple accessories will just up your outfit just like that. And also try to change your hairstyles up a little bit more, you know? Just get into like a more like intricate look and just change your style. It helps, I promise you. So the last one I would say is just adding additions like vests. I know there's sweater vests, there's puffer vests. Me personally, I'm into a lot of puffer vests this fall. Um, only because I've never tried that before and it's something that I'm really into. Um, I like them because you can, once again, dress them up and dress them down. Black is my one color that I love to go to if you're trying to go for a little more dressier. Only either black jeans, black leggings, or even like leather pants, only because like it just looks more clean. Um, but even if you want to do a jean look just like her, she did like a sweater vest and some jeans and some cute little boots and then just throw on a sweater vest, or I'm sorry, a puffer vest, it just adds to the look completely. She could definitely go on a cute date with this and get so many compliments, and it looks adorable. I love it. So that is all that I have for you all today. Next week, be sure to tune in. We're going to have a great Friendsgiving season. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our special Bumble Quick segment. So we are here just to kind of promote our Bumble mission. So the main mission of Bumble as a campus ambassador and campus lead at Elon is to just promote healthy relationships and to allow all these women out here to make the first move and feel empowered and feel like they are in a safe environment when they make their first moves in either relationships, whether it's friends or even through business. Bumble has you. We get three different networks when it comes to Bumble. You have the relationship mode, you have the friendship mode, and you have a business mode, it's kind of like LinkedIn. And unlike Hinge or Tinder, it doesn't allow women to make their first move. So Holland, which one do you like and why? Um, I like the relationship setting mode that they have. Um, I find it really empowering that women get to be the ones to reach out first. It makes the environment very different than the other apps you mentioned. So yeah. I've had a very positive experience with Bumble and I recommend people to get it if they're interested in that. Well, that is amazing. So I have some great news for you all. This November, we are hosting a cuffing season event next Tuesday at the Mission Tacos for the South. It's a little mini Friendsgiving where we're gonna be allowing some party platters, some building your own tacos. Ooh. We're gonna have lots of free merch, Exciting. as you can see that she has. And the first 10 people that come get one free margarita per. And the first five couples that come get a gift card. So I advise you to come. It's from 7 to 9 p.m. next Tuesday in Holland. Will you be attending? I will be attending, yes. Okay, great. Well, thank you guys so much for kicking it with us. We will see you next week. Alright, hey everyone. So we are now at the set. We are at our Taco Tuesday. We have all of our baby merch here. We have some awesome hats, some bags, some nice little stickers, some notebooks. Um, what about if they can't get around with those? And we have our flag that we're going to get everybody to sign. To 
find out more about eTalk, visit elonstudenttv.org.